20% of mortgage holders are at risk of mortgage stress. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your shine of coffee, let's have a look at this article from Roy Morgan discussing mortgage stress, already a danger for one in five mortgage holders as the loan holidays are set to end. That's 783,000 everyone, that's sounds rather scary actually when you look at it like that. So new research from Roy Morgan shows an estimated 783,000 mortgage holders, 20%. We're at risk of mortgage stress in the three months to November 2020. This period encompasses the end of Victoria's long second lockdown, but the last few months have taught us that border closures and short, sharp lockdowns appear to be with us for some time to come. And, well, as I'm recording this, Victoria just announced a five-day lockdown. So, yeah, yes it is. So, this is unchanged on a year earlier in late 2019, although up from record lows in the middle of last year when only 668,000 mortgage holders were considered at risk between July and, up and September 2020. The low rate of at-risk mortgages during 2020 came during the period of maximum support provided to the economy by the federal government as well as measures taken by banks and financial institutions to support borrowers by giving borrowers in financial distress mortgage holidays. Exactly. And I mean just look at JobKeeper as one example of government support that's going to run out. In Victoria, nearly 9% of people employed were supported by JobKeeper. 9%. Probably about 8.67. That's, that's a lot of people, everyone. And sure, not, not all of those businesses needed that support. And don't get angry at businesses that take it. If the government is stupid enough to hand out money to everyone... You can be all righteous and go, no, I won't take it and give other people a, a competitive advantage. That's not how it works, sadly. You know. Anyway, back to this. As we head into 2021, the financial support provided by governments, banks and financial institutions is being progressively withdrawn with mortgage holidays ending and wage subsidy programs such as JobKeeper set to fi finish by the end of next month. The withdrawal of this support gives increased importance to tracking the level of mortgage stress during 2021, as it can provide an early indicator of potential financial problems approaching in the near future. So here we go. We've got people at risk. Uh, in 07, it, it peaked at the GFC over 35%. Now we're sitting at 20% here. So it was, it was low. It was lower there, and it shot up. So say we get that what, 6% increase? We could hit at 26%, guys. We, Yeah, and look at the extreme at risk. 12.4%, not as bad as it was. I mean, are you at mortgage stress, everyone? So, so let's have a look here. Importantly, Roy Morgan have has tracked the impact of the pandemic on employment situations in Australia. In May 2020, 11.2 million working Australians, 72%, reported a change of their employment circumstances because of the pandemic. And in November 2020, there were still 10.2 million reporting their employment situation had changed. Many of these employment changes are negative and include having work, at work hours reduced, not having any work offered, having been stood down for a period of time, business has slowed or stopped completely, had pay reduced for the same number of working hours or been made redundant. I mean, yeah. It, it, it's a mixed bag on who you talk to. Anyone in the construction game, a lot of people are just going flat out at the moment in the housing sector. My engineer, I'm trying to chase to make some small changes. He can't even look at my drawings because he's so flat out. Still waiting on a return call from my certifier for our, our little project here. People are flat out. I'm hoping it will quiet down in a couple of months, but but then you talk to other people who are in, you know, in the tourism sector or related industries. You know, my sister-in-law, she'd been on, on JobKeeper for months, not working. Finally got, it, got back at the airport. Finally. Hopefully, she'll be one of the lucky ones to keep a job. So, for Australians with negative employment changes due to the pandemic, mortgage stress is significantly higher. With over a quarter, 25.7 now in mortgage stress, over five points higher than for all mortgage holders. 
In addition, nearly 1 in 6, 16.8, are extremely at risk. Some people are going to have to sell their houses. Some people are going to lose their homes. The saddest ones will be the people who lose their homes through no fault of their own, through the government interventions and lockdowns into the economy to mitigate the spread of this, and they're going to lose out. It's, well, it's sad. It's a part of reality, guys. That's how life is sometimes. You've got to not let it get you down and rebuild. There's always, always a chance. So, how are mortgage holders considered at risk or extremely at risk determined? Roy Morgan considers the risk of mortgage stress among mortgage holders in two ways. Mortgage holders are considered at risk if their mortgage repayments are greater than a certain percentage of household income, depending on income and spending. Mortgage holders are considered extremely at risk if even the interest only is over a certain proportion of household income. Oh boy. So, there you go. 16. Oh wait, that's negative. Employment changes. 12% of extremely at risk. One in five mortgage holders were at risk in November, just up from the record lows of mid-2020. In the three months to November 2020, 20% of mortgage holders were at risk, 783,000, which is unchanged on a year earlier, but up from 668,000 reported in the three months to September 2020. Of those at risk, more than half, 454,000 or 12.4% of all mortgage holders were considered extremely at risk. Although still low compared to levels of the last few years, this is up from the record low of 384,000 reported in the three months to October 2020. Now, what's what's cons what, what I think we're seeing here is the same thing with the well low levels of insolvencies. They're about 50% of where they should be because of all of the support mechanisms. So what happens when they pull the rug out, guys? These are the latest findings from Roy Morgan's single source survey based on in-depth interviews conducted with 50,000 Australians each year, including over 10,000 owner-occupied mortgage holders. So the chief executive of Roy Morgan says levels of mortgage stress in Australia plunged during 2020, but the winding back of support from the federal government and banking and financial institu inst institutions this year is a test for the property sector. And here are some quotes. Yeah. Uh, the latest Roy Morgan data into the Australian housing market shows mortgage stress continued to track near record lows in the three months to November 2020. There were 783,000 mortgage holders considered at risk. So, however, as we head into 2021, the significant support by the federal government, as well as banking and financial institutions, has been wound back. According to APRA, banks have deferred payments on home loans valued up to $43 billion. So, there we have it, guys. Let's have a look here. At risk is based on those paying more than a certain proportion of their after tax, after tax household income, 25 to 45 percent, depending on income and spending into their home loan. Based on the appropriate standard variable rate reported by the RBA and the amount they initially borrowed. So up to 25 to 45 percent. Extremely at risk is also based on those paying more than a certain proportion of their after tax household income. Same thing, they're not selling. So it'd be over this, I'm assuming. They're paying more than 45%, up to 50%. I mean, there's no problem with paying that much if you're just decimating your loan. But if you're just use, doing that to scrape by just to meet the minimum repayments, that's scary, guys. I, I did a survey on the community post here for Heiser Says. Uh, 640 people voted. So I asked, are you or someone you know in mortgage stress? And you can still vote on this, guys. I'll link to it down below. So 9% said, yes, we are in mortgage stress. 11% said, yes, we know people who are in mortgage stress. 33% said, no, we're ahead or debt-free. 34% don't have a mortgage. And 13% are struggling to, or they can't even get together a deposit. And let's have a look at some of the comments that people have said here. So Yogi Bear, I've been stacking toilet paper to trade for a house. It's going to pay off. Well, I'll give you a heart for that one, mate, because yes, <laughs> I think I just shared a Twitter post. Uh, the shelves are empty in Melbourne. The shelves are empty again, apparently. It's a joke. I mean, we, we if anything, if the one silver lining out of this whole bloody mess of, of the last year and this year can be that we look at the diet of people. Why are people shitting that much? 
you do not need that much toilet paper. If you're using that much toilet paper, there is a medical issue. And I, I would suggest, honestly, look at low carb down, type in low carb down under fiber. Okay, because you don't need it, guys. You really don't need to have that many daily bowel movements. It's not not natural. So, Adam Davis. One down, two-thirds of the second paid off. Congratulations, mate. Good work. And Miss uh, Juju Pants. No house, no debt, half a deposit. So, building up, starting to stack. Good. Sunrise. No mortgage could mean two of more things. Fully owned or renting or living in the street. Well, okay, true, but still... You know, still no mortgage. You wouldn't be, you may have housing stress. And Andrew loves debt and he's continue, going to continue getting into debt. And Herbert von Sauerkraut, Unterholz. Big mortgage and I've lost my job in November, but I have big savings. Do not need to worry. Gold, silver, shares, crypto and debt-free property overseas. So he thought ahead. KMR. I wonder what proportion of those that have no mortgage have either paid theirs off or never had one. I may, maybe I should ask that in another survey. Um, Syphilix, no mortgage is awesome, except I also don't have a house. And who replied, nothing is better than something. Well, I guess, you know, not having the, the burden of the mortgage. So we're ahead or debt free are two separate things. Yeah, I know, but kind of mean the same thing. For, you know, for being under stress. So... He paid us off 18,000 pounds four months ago. Congratulations. And uh, Jenna T, I think she was like the second person that voted. 80% no mortgage is awesome. But uh, yeah, no, we, uh, we're not at that, way, at that level anymore. So I'll just refresh that to see if anyone else voted. There you go. Five more. It didn't really move the numbers. So there we have it, guys. 783,000 people at least spending 25% of their money after the tax money on their mortgages. So that's a definition of mortgage stress. Now, do you think that's a bad thing? Do you think, you know, mortgage, you know, being at stress, it means you probably can't leave the most, live the most luxurious lifestyle, but 25% of your money going, you know, after tax still leaves 75% for other costs, for food and other things. You can, a question, another question I put here, and this is one I asked, uh, hang on, we'll go, we'll go to Heiser says, this is another one I asked on the community post was, do you think that owning a television is a luxury? You know, yes. If times are tough, you can survive without one. 42% said that. 26% said no, they're a necessity. And 32% asked what a television was. Now, I haven't had a television plugged in in years. The reason I asked that is, well, you often see people who are complaining about how life is unfair, how they've got no money, how they need to increase the welfare or, or you know, the system's all stacked against them. They're always broke, always going to payday lenders. Have a nice big flat screen TV. Do you think it's a luxury or not? If you're only if you're spending 25% on your mortgage and you're at risk, you've got a whole lot of stuff you can sell before you need to, you know, sell that house. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join the channel on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us using our affiliate links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. You can buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint, or support us via PayPal. You can also sign up to meet our ex, helping us get some, some training, or use Self Wealth, where we get five free share trades and you get them too. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time.